So, having seen uh, uh, the littoral drift, littoral current, etc., the behavior of uh, uh, waves uh, in the coastal environment, yeah, then now we move on to some uh, aspects of uh, structures. The most widely used uh, structures are the breakwaters. As we have seen uh, under the uh, topic uh, coastal protection measures, breakwaters can be used for mostly for formation of artificial harbors, so as to have a tranquility area within the harbor basin. Apart from that, it can be used as coastal protection measure like offshore detached breakwaters. So, because of the diffraction of waves in between the breakwater gap, you have the deposition of sand on the lee side of the breakwater, but you also have the alternate zones of erosion and deposition, but you need to carefully design the gaps as well as the distance between the shoreline and the breakwater etc. Some of these aspects we have already seen earlier, but now so that is one, one of the application of breakwaters then apart from the ports for the formation of harbors. And also I would like to say that although we call it as breakwaters, we also have the words the terminology is used as groins, training walls etc. The design of these are almost similar to that of a breakwater. What I will do is I will just go into the details of the breakwater, the classification etc. and then I will also we will look into the advantages and disadvantages of each of the type of breakwater where and when you apply or adopt different kinds of breakwaters and then we will go on to the design aspects. And I will give you a design example only if a time permits because we do not have enough time to look at the design because we have seen other problems, but the design of breakwater is not so difficult once you know the principles. So, the contents of this lecture will be introduction, types of breakwaters, selection of breakwater type, then some of the recent developments, <coughs> the design of rubble mound breakwaters, maybe the design principles of time permitting, I might consider giving a sample design. Okay. Then we go in for modeling and some of the case studies, then we get into the some of the ongoing research that also if time permits. So, let us look at the definition, breakwaters are wave energy barriers designed to protect the protect water area behind them from direct assault of waves. These are constructed to create calm water in a harbor area which provides protection for safe mooring operation, operation as well as handling of ships and harbor facilities. So, uh, you people know already that this is the shoreline, you normally have a breakwater something like this, so this, this is normally this is bulging out like this, this is called as the head of the breakwater and this is called as the trunk of the breakwater, this is this portion is called as the trunk and this is the head of the breakwater. The, so, in the cross section also I will show you how it looks like. So, the layout of a typical layout of a harbor is as shown here because this would be to create a calm water a harbor basin wherein the ships with the vessels may be, be it may be fishing crafts or fishing vessels or maybe be commercial harbors. So, they come and then once they come here then you normally have some kind of a, a turning circle and then they turn and then uh, maybe berth, go towards the berth and then you have the ships berthed here and then the vessel, the cargo from the vessel or maybe the fish catch from the uh, fishing crafts are offloaded and then it is sent for processing or delivery or whatever it is. Okay. So, the purpose is you need to handle again similarly offloading as well as unloading. 
so you need a calm water if there is no calmness within the harbor basin what happens when they are trying to load or unload you see the the boat is going to be keep on uh, uh, will be in motion and that's going to create lot of problems and not only that if the motion is continuous the mooring lines also can snap okay so you need to arrest the movement of the vessel so in order to achieve a kind of a, 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 a desired degree of a tranquility or the calmness in the basin you have a pair of breakwaters usually a pair of breakwaters sometimes it can be more than a pair of breakwaters depending on the site okay sometimes it can be just a single breakwater also even with a, just a single breakwater also you can have a, a harbor basin it all depends on the geomorphology of the site conditions okay so the purpose of breakwater is to break the energy contained in the waves so we all know that the energy is there in the waves and when they are propagating once you have a breakwater it breaks the energy in the uh, uh, waves and leaving uh, a certain degree of tranquility on its lee side what you would have is some amount of diffraction that the energy will try to penetrate here the essential of the uh, harbor is this should be if this end is a roof, is a pump uh, is kind of a an impermeable medium then you can have a, a kind of cross uh, oscillation which is not desirable so hence we go in for a rubble mount breakwater or a, a breakwater which has a certain degree of porosity so that it absorbs or dissipates the incident wave energy okay so <coughs> i also have uh, some photograph here a purpose as i said earlier to maintain tranquility conditions inside the harbor to protect the shore against the waves so it can be in terms of for example submerged breakwater we have seen submerged breakwater what happens it facilitates premature breaking allowing uh, the deposition of the sand in between the shoreline and uh, the breakwater or it can reduce dredging at the harbor entrance depending on its orientation it can serve as a key facility you can berth ships if you have a breakwater with some kind of a uh, a vertical surface at certain locations then it can serve as a, a key facility and when i say key facility when you look at the different types of breakwaters the composite breakwater is one such type wherein the breakwater face can be used for key face, for berthing facility and then uh, the finally it is also can be the one of the purpose is to guide the currents we have a a variety of layout you just go into the uh, internet and then uh, look at the uh, just give uh, harbor layouts then uh, you will get a number of uh, harbor layouts so this is the one such layout picked from the uh, internet because uh, I, uh, this explains uh, uh, this gives a uh, very nice view about how a, a layout what are the essential components of a, a harbor which is formed uh, with a pair of breakwaters so and also it also considers uh, to some extent the geomorphology so the geomorphology shows that there is an headland okay this headland is going to serve as a, some kind of a, a natural barrier or a natural breakwater for the waves penetrating from uh, this direction so this would be only this uh, would need only to uh, uh, attenuate or reduce the energy in the waves coming from this direction so uh, the, you may have different options for example you could have gone uh, you can have a breakwater like this jetting into the ocean from this okay this already would have been uh, in a water depth of say 5 6 meters uh, rough guess you know so you can just uh, uh, have this breakwater somewhere like this or you can have a breakwater all the way going up to this a single breakwater all right and then uh, this itself could be treated as a, 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 a tip of a breakwater so that the vessels can come from this direction whether the vessels will come uh, the orientation of the uh, uh, layout 
the orientation of the approach channel can be will depend on basically the wave characteristics wave directions so this obviously shows that there are uh, this obviously shows that the predominant wave direction is from this so the breakwater is oriented right angle to the predominant wave direction predominant or the most frequently occurring wave direction so when you do that then there are there could be some amount of disturbance in the harbor basin for the waves which are approaching from this direction hence you need to have at another breakwater and that is why you see that there is a, another breakwater which comes running like this in this direction to take care of the waves which are coming from this direction so still there might be some uh, degree of disturbance you may not have 100% tranquility uh, but i don't use the word seldom but mostly if you are able to have a disturbance of about say uh, uh, even up to uh, 1 foot or maybe 30 centimeters it's okay it's tolerable but only when you have a long period wave entering into the harbor your problem will the problem will be very quite severe okay so <coughs> now what are the other essential components of the harbor although we i am not supposed to cover this i'm just uh, uh, giving some of the only the just the overall uh, view of a uh, uh, picture see you have some kind of a finger jetty so this is basically for a recreation harbor wherein you have uh, see for example small uh, finger jetties where you can have uh, the pleasure boats coming and uh, uh, berthed here they are berthed here and then the person after berthing here he walks over this uh, finger jetty and then he climbs over the platform and then when goes into his uh, uh, area maybe it's a uh, uh, his house or whatever it is on to the land facilities you understand so this is so you have some other kind of a, maybe you have a bigger uh, vessel it can come on berth here or it can berth here or it can berth here so this is the berthing facility which is uh, available here and this is going to take care of the uh, waves so note note that you see the, there is a kind of a bulging here and this is called as the head of the breakwater why there is a, a, a flatter a flatter surface because this uh, the cross section is obviously trapezoidal the cross section is trapezoidal so it will have a, a number of uh, uh, layers which we will see later so this uh, but this uh, typically the side slopes so the side slopes will be maybe 1 is to 1.5 and 1 is to up to maybe 1 is to 2.5 that is for the trunk portion but the head portion the slope will be more flatter maybe 1 is to 3 so the head portion will occupy more material the size of the stone which may be used for both the trunk and the head will still be same but we adopt a flatter slope for the head for the simple reason at the head of the breakwater you will see that the the waves are coming from different directions the size of the stone the weight of the stone for this section is designed or evaluated for the waves which are approaching the structure normal to it based on that only we determine the size of the stone for the trunk okay since uh, the this portion the head is going to be exposed to waves from different directions see one particular direction if you use the same uh, uh, slope for one particular direction which is just more more or less coinciding with the, 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 this direction you may not have much of problem but when you have a, a wave coming from the other direction some other direction then there can be some amount of disturbance after all although you see huge boulders used but uh, the function wise you see once uh, if one stone is removed it is something like uh, removing your sand castle so you build a sand castle and it is stable 
and uh, if you give a slight disturbance to the bottom the whole whole sand castle collapses. So, such situation can happen even in the case of breakwaters. So, you need to be careful while designing the breakwater although the design is not so complicated. So, when you so this is the head of the breakwater what I am trying to see is I am looking at the breakwater from this portion when I look not this breakwater generally. So, when you look through the breakwater from the head so then, then you see that it may look like this. So, you see that there is a core layer and then there is a secondary layer and then over that you have the armor layer or what is called as primary layer. So, this will be the this will be the uh, kind of a, a structure and you may have some kind of a, a birthing structure and this can be supported on piles. Supported on piles means here this portion you know this portion can still be the same rubble mount ok. So, and then but then this portion alone will be supported on piles what does that mean? What does that mean? So, I have a, a breakwater then I have a berth I have a berth take resting on piles ok all right. So, what will happen when the uh, this portion only what I am trying to say is only this portion of uh, the berth your ship will be anchored here ok. So, what what is happening here because these are all only piles at spacings. So, you have a clear spacing through which the waves will still penetrate and it is going to be absorbed by this rubble mount. So, you do not have the problem of reflection from the medium you understood that is what that is the purpose of having a berth supported on piles. Okay. The other way is you have a berth here itself, but then you are going to have a reflecting <coughs> reflecting medium. <coughs> so, I will we'll just look into the classification as well as the advantages and disadvantages of the different types of breakwaters. types of breakwaters. We have the S type breakwater that is the sloping type breakwater S type is a sloping then we have the V type which are the vertical breakwaters then we have C type which is the composite breakwaters. <coughs> then we have mixed type combinations and then finally, we have what are called as the special types of breakwaters ok. All the lecture material what I am presenting will be made available to you. So, you have the PDF files so that you can just have a look and then try to listen to the lecture also if you are interested. So, what is the sloping or the S type breakwater? These breakwaters basically consists of rubble mount that is how it originated. It started with rubble mount the incident wave energy is dissipated when the waves run over the sloping surface you have a sloping surface and you have certain amount of permeability and also the surface is going to have some degree of roughness. When the waves are going to move over this roughened surface and 
the energy will be lost by the due to the friction offered and as well as the energy will be lost due to the permeability when the waves are trying to penetrate through the permeable medium. Energy is lost due to friction, percolation through the porous medium and also due to partial reflection. The partial reflection will be more if your slope is going to be steeper. If it is flatter, the, the reflection is going to be less as we have seen earlier. So, the seaside slope is a flatter usually of 1 is to 2 to 1 is to 2.5 and the harbor side is steeper uh, to an extent of 1.5 to 2. Uh, this uh, what does that mean? So, if I, I can have something like this approximately. So, what does it say? Flatter on the sea side. So, this is going to be your sea side. Why this side is flatter? What will happen if it is steeper? Reflection will be more. Force is exerted on the structure will be more. Is that clear? So, if the forces are exerted more, then you will have more disturbance. But here, when you have the waves coming here, this is the sea side and this is the harbor side. Since the energy has to be absorbed and since the structure is directly exposed to the action of waves, you need to have a flatter surface. So, that there is certain degree of dissipation taking place when the waves are running over the flatter surface. and reflection also is going to be less. But once the energy is absorbed on the lee side the energy is going to be less. When the energy is less why should you have flatter, flatter surface? There is no harm you can still have the same surface, same slope. Is there any, any problem with the uh, stability of the structure? No problem. Only thing is you are adding on unnecessary material to the structure because it is quite good enough only you have a, a steeper slope here because there is not going to be much of disturbance here. When you have a, a, a two breakwaters what is the kind of a, 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 I mean force which is going to be acting on the rubble mount? It is only the due to the diffracted waves which is going to be much less. So, you have a, a, a steeper slope here. Then comes the slope of the head of the breakwater is still flatter that the reasons I have already told you 1 is to 3 to 1 is to 1 is to 5. So, rubble mount breakwaters are easier to construct. And the kind of uh, uh, machinery you need, it is not very sophisticated kind of machinery which you need to construct a rubble mount breakwaters. It is easier to construct and uh, it is also termed as a kind of a flexible structure for the simple reason the type of damage that occurs is only removal of stones. Not very often the entire material is removed. The more often what would happen is some individual stones may be rocking. The problem comes only when a, a single unit is totally displaced from its original location to a new location. And if this new location is more than one times diameter, one times the average diameter of the stone, then it is really very highly questionable, I mean the stability of the armor layer. So, the stability of the armor layer is verified usually through experimental facilities, I mean uh, through physical modeling which we will see later. So, now, so whenever only very important in the case of double rubble mount breakwater is once 
there when once you notice some kind of a degree of a, a failure immediately you have to replenish so there is a need for continuous monitoring particularly during a storm after a storm you you need to in, inspect uh, the rubble mount breakwater to check for uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, disturbance and if there are some disturbance if you need to replenish this you need to replenish this and that is where most most of the breakwaters the people who are in charge of breakwater sometimes they miss it they postponed for want of funds due to paucity of funds once you postpone the rehabilitation what happens the next storm comes the cumulative damage will be more severe there are instances where the whole breakwater has breached but uh, this breakwater gives you enough time for you to take a decision on its rehabilitation but if you don't do that rehabilitation then the whole thing can even collapse so that is uh, the advantage of having a, a flexible structure like your rubble mount breakwaters when large size natural rocks are not available artificial harmer blocks are adopted which we will discuss later because when you calculate later you will see that the weight of the stone is directly proportional to h cubed have you heard of hudson's formula all of you so when uh, this wave height this is very important when you fix the wave height if you make any uh, uh, small mistake when fixing the wave height since it is cube the weight you may uh, you may estimate with a, a lesser wave height can lead to a substantial under design which can result in failure so you need to carefully do that the most fundamental breakwater of this type is the one randomly placed stones so this randomly placed stones even now people are used to this for example if there is some kind of a flooding somewhere what do you do you either dump sandbags or stones although he doesn't have any engineering uh, uh, engineering background but certainly it has a degree of relief as a temporary measure it it could always serve its purpose so this is how the whole thing started now then slowly developments in the breakwaters uh, took place a multi layered rubble mount breakwater was later developed to increase its stability and uh, also to decrease the wave transmission as well as material cost so when you design a breakwater you are you have you need to have a number of things in mind the run up should be less the dissipation should be more the cost should be less the cross section has to be stable okay you also have to take care of some points concerning the environmental conditions and also the kind of labor you have machinery type of machinery you have because in certain locations where you cannot get good machinery then there's no point in having some uh, uh, big breakwaters which can which has to come up so all these things have to be done in the planning stage itself man material etc which i will we will uh, look into it when we are going to talk about the different kinds of breakwaters so armor stability can be increased by uh, uh, using shaped designed concrete blocks while overtopping can be reduced by having a superstructure so this is type s other this is type s what will happen under type s you can either have overtopping structure or a non overtopping structure when you have a overtopping structure you have to be very careful with this rear slope if this kind of a structure 
you allow the over topping to take place what will happen this whole thing will yield and in fact the failure will progress from this end which can ultimately result in the breach so you, you what exactly you want to do if you don't want to have any over topping then you have to increase the crest level where do you want to compensate whether you want to increase the crest level and design it as a non over topping structure or you have a strengthened harbor side and have a reduced top level crest level so that occasional over topping is permitted the options is left to you when I say options are left to you, you need to consider the wave climate in that particular area based on which only you can design and take a decision. We now that we have issues like sea level rise, tsunami, all these things, one need to be very careful when he wants to propose a non overtopping structure at locations where you have this kind of a phenomena can occur or that might occur. Okay. So, you go in for what is called as a, 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 a crown wall. So, here you have the crown wall see the design of all these things may not be much of it is not so complicated, but here design of this needs a lot of attention. Stability of crown wall is also very important. Now, stability of crown wall, the forces coming on this may be very less because this is going to be acting as an attenuating medium, thus reducing the energy. But in the event of an extreme event, what would happen if the water level here goes much higher than this, then this portion is directly exposed to the waves. And you know that when you have a vertical wall and here when you have a vertical wall and the waves are coming and hitting the structure, the reflection is 100 percent more or less 100 percent because you have still a permeable medium here. So, it cannot be 100 percent, but still it will be on the higher side. So, you can have enormous forces acting on the wall and also the base structure. The base structure there will be uplift pressures acting. So, this needs careful design, carefully it has to be designed. Under the same thing you can have reef breakwaters or the submerged breakwaters. This I we have already covered under the coastal protection. So, I do not want to repeat this anyway, this will serve as for the coastal protection measure. Then you have the reshaping breakwaters, all these things are coming under the S type or the rubble mount breakwaters. So, reshaping breakwater utilize the basic concept of establish an e establishing an equilibrium between the slope of the rubble mount and the wave action that is the rubble mound forms a S shaped slope to stabilize itself against the wave action. That is when the waves are coming and hitting the structure what is the kind of, see now you have a, a rubble mound. One aspect is this is going to serve as a, a berm, this is going to serve as a berm and when there is a, a, a failure this is how it takes care that is when uh, suppose uh, sorry so this is how a, a structure would fail you look at the type of failure the waves when come and when they come and hit the structure it will remove the material at this location because this is where you have maximum force exerted 
these stones will be removed and where it will be deposited it will be deposited here okay so what is the type of failure this is a s type failure okay so in order to take care of that you have provide a berm here okay and this is going to this is why what is called as a reshaping breakwater a lot of work has been done in this area the s type alf torum in fact he has done a lot of work on the s shaped breakwaters so i suggest if you are interested you can look at this some of his papers he has published a number of papers and this has gained importance particularly in europe but there is still an argument whether the material is going to be more than the conventional breakwaters because when you have a, 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 a berm breakwaters you see that material is slightly more than what is needed for the conventional type advantages of rubble mount breakwaters use of natural material is a very big advantage especially when large quantity of rubble stones are available near the site so this results in a reduction of the material cost particularly when you have when you can get rock mit rocks very close use of smaller construction equipment this is what i have been telling you okay and then uh, uh, less environmental impact due to smaller reflected waves because most of the energy is absorbed reflection is less creation of a natural reef the slope of the breaks double mount breakwater provides a suitable life a suitable location for the marine life this again being debated because certain locations where there are certain species they don't like the rock material they don't like rocks so a number of projects have been uh, 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 I've been said a uh, number of uh, no has been uh, told for a number of projects uh, with uh, this kind of uh, 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 I mean rubble mound breakwaters etc. That is how that is one of the reason why geosynthetics have come into play. Now we move on to vertical type. Are there any questions? are there any questions sir yeah. core of it's only stones basically stones only they use for the core but now <coughs> recently what they have started talking is you fill in geo bags with sand and that can replace the core that can serve as a core but still it's only on experimental stage it is not a, a, a well accepted practice this i will touch <coughs> when we discuss about geosynthetics that time we'll discuss about that so vertical type breakwaters are the type b type vertical breakwaters will have a naturally vertical wall with different heights the basic purpose of a vertical breakwater is to reflect energy so you will not have any energy on the arbor side on the lee side of the breakwater unlike rubble mount rubble mount permits certain amount of transmission because the absorbing will be maybe about 50% say and some amount of energy may be about 10% is lost in friction 10% is lost when it is running over so maybe 30% to 20% is being transmitted or maybe even 50% is being transmitted but in the case of a vertical uh, uh, breakwater the entire energy is reflected back so on the lee side of the breakwater there is no energy so when you have 
uh, st the shoreline if I construct a breakwater like this do you see any anything here any disturbance absolutely no it will be something like a swimming pool. If you remove one then the disturbance is going to be there should there will be some amount of disturbance because there will be waves coming in this direction. Suppose if you construct a wall like this and another wall like this this is left and when the waves are moving in this direction what do you see you will see the diffraction taking place so there will be very little energy that will be penetrating but still there will be some amount of disturbance here. Suppose if you close this then it will be something something like a swimming pool. But if you close all the three sides with a rubble mount medium you will not have something like a swimming pool because there will still be certain amount of disturbance. It depends on the permeability that is being offered by the kind of if you have a really uh, a lot of permeability then you can have still a disturbance taking this is very simple. So, the lee side of the breakwater can be used as berthing facility absolutely no disturbance so the ship can be anchored. So, this is how a, a, a vertical breakwater looks so this will be very calm now we also have composite breakwaters what is meant by composite breakwater composite breakwater you have both vertical composite breakwaters as well as horizontal composite breakwaters under the vertical composite breakwaters this consists of a rubble mount found rubble mount foundation and caissons of different heights preferred at locations where tidal range is quite high. So, you can have a relatively low mount wherein you have a, this is going to take care of the stability of this mount uh, of this wall this is low mount whereas this is high mount and this is relatively high mount composite type breakwaters are preferred at locations where the tidal range is large why so because during a low tide a rubble mount breakwater will work sorry a composite breakwater will work or function as a rubble mount breakwater during low tide. During high tide the composite breakwater will work as a or perform the uh, role of a caisson breakwater. And uh, this also offers scour protection when you have this one there is not much of scour taking place near the tip. Uh, near the toe of the breakwater. So, what you need to do you need to find out the stability of this structure you need to know the st stability of the structure by evaluating the pressures acting on this. So, pressures exerted on composite breakwaters through which you can find out the stability of the caisson is uh, very well discussed in uh, book of Goda refer to book I think it is a random waves random waves on maritime structures or something like that. It is an excellent book where Goda has given formulas for evaluating the pressures on the vertical composite breakwaters. Evaluating the pressures on a, a vertical wall we will see later and we will also cover something some aspects on evaluation of the pressures on vertical breakwaters using the coastal the method of a coastal engineering manual.
Kaizen breakwaters with the caissons with the sloping tops. The sloped superstructure reduces the force that is the downward force on the slope cancel the uplift force. So, thereby increasing the stability of the caisson. So, that is the principle why you have a sloping surface particularly near the free surface. So, and that is where you are going to have a maximum force acting on the caisson. Caisson breakwaters with perforated walls. This can perforated walls because you have a caisson already and suppose in case the caisson is in distress. Caisson is in distress means it might have been constructed many years back and probably it is serving more than it is a design life and it is playing an important role in a particular environment say then and you want to protect you do not you cannot afford to lose the structure. So, the apart from so many other ways of rehabilitation of the existing caisson type breakwater you can also have a perforated wall in front of it on the sea side. So, when the waves come and feel the perforations on the sea side of the existing caisson breakwater, the energy gets dissipated because it is flowing through the porous medium and also the oscillations here can mostly the dissipation is taking place through the perforations. So, this perforated sheets or perforated walls this is one area where lot of work has been done and is also being done even now. Advantages of composite breakwaters, small body width because the imprint on the in the ocean is less. The base width of a rubble mount breakwater is huge. When you have a, a rubble mount breakwater the top width is usually about 8 meters. 8 to 10 meters and then uh, think of a, a, a structure uh, think of a rubble bound meters a rubble bound uh, breakwater in a, a water depth of 10 meters. So, when you adopt 1 is to 2 so maybe this is 10 meters now you calculate what is the base width you understood this is 10 8 meters plus you need to add up this uh, this kind of a, a base width on both sides. So, the total base width is going to be quite huge compared to a composite breakwater. So, that is a big advantage. Construction is more economical particularly in deeper waters. If you go in for deeper waters this construction is quite easy mostly it is a caisson which is cast on land and then it is stored and then it is erected. In addition a small breakwater width limits the impact of seabed life because it does not really hinder the seabed life and increases the usable water area. Lee side can be used for berthing of vessels which we have already seen. Reduced maintenance composite breakwaters requires less maintenance relatively compared to rubble mount breakwaters with blocks. I can, it is almost uh, uh, free from maintenance, but still there is some amount of some degree of and uh, the construction is quite rapid. Reduction of failure during construction composite breakwaters can be constructed rapidly and is fully stabilized once the caissons are made like a gravity structure, but put by putting sand inside. So, in addition not much of a quarry work is required the environmental damage you do is far less compared to your rubble mount breakwater. But for fisheries harbor can you go for vertical breakwaters no for fisheries harbor you go only up to about 6 meters water depth. So, you do not need to go for a uh, uh, vertical type breakwater. So, with this I will stop here and we will continue next class. Okay. <laughs>